Thielen on Jalen Hurts are the same. You know, I think he's serviceable. I think he's a good game manager. From what I saw last week, he got the job done. Did he do anything flashy? No, he did what he was supposed to do as a quarterback in the National Football League. And that was the RPOs, pretty much. But RPOs are designed for quarterbacks that aren't great. You know, Nick Foles. I'll even admit it. I'm a huge Nick Foles fan because he won the Super Bowl. They put the RPOs in there to dumb it down a little bit to help him out. That's what they did with Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts did it phenomenally. He did spectacularly. He did it in rhythm. You know, and they're going to continue to use the RPOs with him because he's not a Patrick Mahomes. He's not a Tom Brady. He's not a Russell Wilson. He's, he's, he's Jalen Hurts. But they have to dumb it down for him because, you know, he's not one of those players that will make a huge play to get your team back in the game. What's going on YouTube? It's your main man, Boyce Life, coming at you with another video. So as you all know already, I am at home recovering. I feel great. There's no more pain. That literally was the worst pain I have ever felt in my entire life. Worse than my Achilles popping. Worse than my elbow blowing out. Worse than my shoulder getting blown out. Worse, I, I this gallbladder, gallbladder pain that I had. Never felt pain like that before. Now, it was a recurring thing, but this time the pain would not go away. I was starting to see flashing lights. I was getting ready to pass out. That's how bad this pain was. And anyone who's out here in YouTube land that has experienced this pain knows exactly what I'm talking about. And I want to thank everyone for the prayers and their concerns and everything that was wishing me well. I appreciate you, every single one of y'all. Even though you're an Eagle fan, you're a Niner fan, um, Steeler fan, um, Washington fan, Giant fan. It don't matter. At the end of the day, we're all people. We're a community, a f fan of the game. And I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. But with that being said, this is my only video that I'm doing for this week, um, and I'm kind of skipping over the Chargers. Why? Because LA original, whatever number he wants to be, um, is a nameless, face. well not nameless, he's a faceless, scared little boy who doesn't show his face and isn't coming out for a hate week because he doesn't do hate week. But just because he doesn't do a hate week doesn't mean I'm not going to come out one with one. And even though I have Nitro Freak in my intro, Proving that not only am I saying that about their quarterback, you have Eagles video makers, a couple of them, even calling Jalen Hurts a gay manager. But this is the Chargers and Cowboys. And I'm also going to talk about the Niners and the Eagles. Why? Because the Eagles have a say in what the Cowboys do. Okay, just like the Cowboys have a say in what the Eagles do as far as wins, losses, um, standings, and all of that great mess. We have the Chargers this week. We're out Randy Gregory. Um, we're out um, Demarcus Lawrence. You know, we look bleak. We look We look like we're on our heels getting ready to be knocked down. We get Zach Martin back. But I say nay. I say nay. I say bullshit. I say Bush League. Why? Because, first of all, I never thought in a million years that Tank was worth the money that he's getting. And every Cowboy fan that's out there is freaking out and saying, well, not every Cowboy fan. Every Cowboy fan that was putting Blast on Tank's name is now worried that he's not playing and saying we're going to lose. How can you sit there and say that? You literally said this to a, you said this about a man who isn't worth the 20 mil a year. And now you're worried because he's not playing? 
Stick to your guns the way I am. No, I don't think we're going to lose because Tank's not there. No, I don't think we're going to lose because Gregory's not there. The Chargers are out, some players. Adderley is doubtful. Which affects, um, what's his name? The other safety they have, Derwin James. They have a right tackle that's out. They're pulling, putting bulletin board material up for our cornerbacks. I can't wait for Calvin Joseph to get back. I, I really can't. I really can't. Um, Anthony Brown needs to go. That's my only concern in the secondary. Malik Hooker is going to get to play, make his Cowboys debut, and I can't wait. This is a veteran who's played at a high level. You have Trayvon Diggs, who has shut down Mike Evans. Did you hear Mike Evans' call at all last week? No. you. I don't think you did. I don't think you did. This guy is turning into a shutdown cornerback. And then you have the offensive line. Leo Collins is out on some bullshit. But you know what? You got Zach Martin back. Yeah, you got covered McGovern, Connor McGovern waiting in the wings. And should he be starting? Should you move Zach Martin to left tackle? I mean, right tackle, excuse me. Yeah, you should. If the Cowboys were smart, if they were a smart organization, which we have failed to do so in the past, Zach Martin should be at that tackle position. Connor McGovern should be at the guard position. We are not ranked the fourth highest offensive line for no reason last week what we did was unheard of we didn't think that that would even happen everyone that counted that said zach martin was out counted this game as a loss no faith me and a few other cowboy fans knew we were going to be all right we had the confidence in Connor mcgovern and it showed out there it showed the confidence we had because of what Connor McGovern did. Now, should he be getting the start? Absolutely. fucking -lutely. Do I think we're going to go out and get this win? And is it going to be easy? Absolutely not. But you see what we have and what we're going against. You see that all they have on that defensive side is Duran James and he's going to be moved around because this, this year Adderley may not play. And then you got to worry about Bosa. You want to know how you neutralize Bosa? You see how horrible that run defense is that they have? You see how bad that is? You take the number four overall draft pick in 2016 and you hand him the ball 25 times. And you give his backup another 15 times. And you don't have Dak Prescott drop back 30 to 45 times to play. Because we're not going to win that way, fellas. That ain't going to happen. You need to run this ball and control that clock. You want to talk about how our defense is still kind of weak, even though it's a step up from last year? You want to know how you neutralize Justin Herbert and that offense? You keep him off the field with the run game. You keep him off the field so he doesn't have that chance. You minimize his chances of being out on the field. You do what you do on the defensive side and you take the ball away you know what? I said this and I'm going to say it again. I've been saying that this team is going to be trying to take the ball away more than what the defense has in the past. And what happened last week? Four turnovers. Three forced important turnovers. You know what? I'll give Tom Brady a bleh on that fourth one. On that <clears throat> Hail Mary in the end zone. Guys, four, three meaningful turnovers. 21 points. And we only came up, we only came away with three. That is unacceptable. This defense did what they needed to do, and our offense fell fell short. Left 18 points on the board. I'm not even counting that that other one because if we count that, that that just makes it even worse. That makes 25 points left on the board that we would have put up and blown out, blown out. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But now we got the San Diego Chargers. I know they're not from San Diego. But you got the Chargers. An offense that's not up to par with Tampa. 
You got a good, a good up and coming quarterback, but he's not a Tom Brady. We may be, we may be nicked, we may be hurt, we may be winged, we may be grounded, but winners always find a way. And I know Dak Prescott, and I know uh, Mike McCarthy, they're going to find a way to win this game. They're going to find a way to win this game, and it's going to be nice sitting back at 6 o'clock with a W while our foes, our rival, at 3 o'clock are going to be sitting down with the loss, praying and cheering for the Chargers. Now, Niner fans, I got a problem with you because you got a few guys, actually one, that keeps talking about two teams. And you wonder why the TTC is going in the shit because you have guys who are such hypocrites talking shit, talking down to other people, other fan bases who have two-teamers. Yet your team, your fan base has a two-teamer. And y'all aren't calling him out? Y'all aren't saying shit to this man? Yes, he's a friend of mine, but I'm going, this is TTC bullshit, and I'm going to keep it TTC bullshit. And you shouldn't have two teams. I don't give a flying flip if it's whatever team your cross the bay rival is playing. I know you worn a Cowboys jersey. You have one hanging up. In someone else's room. It's sad. The 49er Empire. Billy Badass. You 49 Cent. You guys need to roll up on this man. And you know who I'm talking about. Should I even be mentioning this? Absa fucking Luli. Because you know who won last year? Was it the Niners or the Cowboys? That's right. It was the Dallas Cowboys. And even though we don't play all this year. I have every fucking right to say whatever the fuck I want because I am daddy until we play y'all again. I am daddy until you beat us. So when I say jump, you faggots, you motherfuckers better say how high. Niners better win this game. And I know they will. And Cowboys come 325 are going to have nothing to worry about because they're going to be sitting one and one along with the Philadelphia Shitbirds at 6 o'clock. Tied for the division. I'm out. Peace.